and we're back we're back with another video what is up everyone Ollie here so I haven't done a Q&A for a couple of years now it's been a long time since I last did a Q&A think a new one is in order I asked you guys on YouTube and I asked you guys on Instagram for some questions I've chosen the most common questions and other questions which I think are quite interesting and I think are worth answering so let's get into the most common one and the biggest one is what do I do for a living you know how do I have my money? How do I afford my car? How do I afford the stuff that I have? Which makes sense, you know. Um, I guess it's not completely clear what I do. I do say everywhere that I'm a I'm a designer. I'm a, I'm a web designer. I do have that on my website. I do have it everywhere. But you know, I can understand some people miss it. Um, you know, if you, if you don't know where to look, you won't find it pretty much. So yeah, I'm a web designer mainly, and um, that's what I do day to day. I'm a web designer, and I've used my sort of web design skills to, I guess, like. Um, and build a nice list of clients, have online businesses and do other sort of digital media stuff, you could say. I've always been interested in the internet, I've always been interested in tech, I've always been interested in design. So the three things together um, are coincided very well for me and I've done pretty well. And you know, there isn't a day that that goes by where I think, wow, I'm so fortunate, I'm so lucky to be able to live the life that I do to have the life that I have and to be able to afford the things that I can afford. Um, you know, I wake up every morning, I think, damn, like, I'm one lucky, I'm one lucky person, I'm one lucky dude to, to, to just live comfortably, live more than comfortably, actually. I'd say I live um, a more than comfortable lifestyle. And, you know, it wasn't always like that. I grew up, I didn't grow up wealthy at all. I grew up poor, actually, you could say. Didn't have much at all as I was growing up. Even as a, even as a teenager, I had nothing pretty much. So I've made it and I've done it all myself, um, which, you know, I'm pretty proud of. There's no doubt about that. I'm proud of how I've done it all, all by myself. And, I, you know, I get to live a, a, a great life because of it. So, um, yeah, I do web design for a living. I do design for a living. I do digital media. I do things like that, pretty much. I have a store called ULX Store, which somehow does really well. I started ULX Store because I wanted a place where I could make and design products that I would use, that I want, that specifically cater to things that I want, I want every day, that I want to use every day. And, you know, that's how I've always sort of made it. I haven't really made it because I want to please anyone else. I want to do it because, you know, um, I want to start a nice little business and I want to make products I want to make. And fortunately, a lot of you guys like the products too. And ULX Store does really well. ULX Store takes up around 30% of my time, 20, 30% of my time. The rest of my time is usually spent on client work and managing sort of my other sort of small online businesses. So like I have a themes business as well. Um, which I sell themes on. That does okay, doesn't do anything crazy. Um, most of my money comes from sort of client work and things like that. And over the years, I've built quite a nice list of clients. Um, you know, I try to do the best that I can do when it comes to my work. I try to always under promise and over deliver. Um, that's sort of how I've lived my life ever since I was a teenager. And it works really well, especially when you're in business, when you're working with clients, you know, you promise them something, you sort of under promise them something, and then you give them more than they expected. And they come away even happier. They think they've got um, more value for their money and it works for both of us but it works both for me and for the client so I do UI UX design so user interface design user experience design I also do some front-end development you know I know HTML CSS I know a little bit of JavaScript enough to sort of get me by and I also do e-commerce so those are the sort of three, four main things that I do day to day. Um, and that's what clients hire me for. That's what I do for my own little businesses and things like that. And yeah, I love doing it. It's not something that everyone's going to enjoy doing. And that's why it's so well paid, you know. Um, I think a lot of people think, oh, you can make a website for three, four hundred, five hundred pounds, which you can. You can make websites pretty much for free. Um, but that's not exactly what I'm doing. You know, people hire me because they're looking for a specific style. They're looking to do things which haven't been done before. Or they're looking for someone who's experienced. You know, I have quite a lot of experience in making websites and building websites and managing online businesses and things like that. So, you know, I'm hired as a consultant. I'm hired as a designer, hired to do various different things. There's so much that goes into this sort of thing. And I get bombarded with questions about, you know, how do I become a designer? How do I become a developer? How do I become a business person? All these sorts of things. And I do want to write a book about it. So I'm going to leave a link in the description below where you can pre-order that book. You won't be charged for it. You'll only be charged once I've actually released the book. It's just mainly for me to gauge interest, see how many people are interested. And yeah, if there are enough of you interested in the book, I'll write it and I'll release it. 
So yeah, I'll leave a link to that down in the description below. Pre-order it if you're interested. And yeah, I'll cover everything from start to finish, you know, how I got to where I am and what I think the future holds as well. So yeah, link down in the description below, check it out. I don't think a lot of people realize how much you can make when you work as a designer or developer in like a top company and you have a top list of clients. I have friends who work at Facebook, who work at Twitter, Airbnb, companies like that, you know, top tech companies, designers and developers. And they earn like anywhere between 200,000 to half a million dollars a year, which is obviously amazing money. And when you're good at what you do, you can earn that sort of money. You know, if you get into companies like this, they pay very well. And you know, you just gotta be good at what you do. You've got to really be obsessed with what you do and strive to be the best at it. Most freelance designers and developers who are experienced can make anywhere between 500 to 1,000 a day which is usually the going rate. You know, if you look for freelance jobs in London or you look for them in New York, San Francisco, California, places like that, you know, a lot of these sort of high-end ones pay in between 500 to 1,000 a day. Just depends on how specialist they are. You know, if you're doing, especially JavaScript, JavaScript is probably one of the top paying ones. Um, you know, I know some JavaScript developers who are earning 1,000, 1,500 a day, but you've got to be incredible at what you do and have a great portfolio. So, you know, if you're a beginner, you can definitely make 200, 300, 400, 500 a day. You know, if you're a beginner, you can definitely start there. You've got to start somewhere. But as you go through the ranks, as you get more experience, as you get better at what you do, you can charge some, some serious money. Next question is, what camera do I use to shoot my pictures and shoot my videos? So I use the Sony a7 III, I'm using it now. I've mentioned it numerous times on my YouTube channel. I've mentioned it in videos before. And my lens of choice is the Tamron 28 to 75 f2.8. Fantastic lens, very affordable lens as well compared to other lenses, compared to other competing lenses. And yeah, I use it for video, I use it for photo. It is basically the perfect all round package. Sony a7 III with the Tamron 28 to 75 f2.8. It's not cheap. Um, it costs around probably for the whole setup, 2,800, 2,800 pounds, 2,800 dollars, 3,000 dollars, something like that. It's not cheap, but you know, um, I do commercial photography and I like doing YouTube videos and I like doing video photography, things like that. And for me, it's a worthy investment. Um, if you're someone who's looking for an affordable setup, for an affordable camera setup, you know, if it's taking pictures, that is, I've always recommended the Panasonic GM1 or the Panasonic GX80, I think it is something like that. The Panasonic GM1 was basically my first mirrorless camera that I used to start on Instagram to take the pictures and it's still an incredible camera to this day. I still use it actually just because it's so small. How do I edit my photos? So I do actually have a Lightroom preset pack. I'll leave a link to it down in the description below. All the presets in there I use to edit my photos and I use Lightroom on the desktop. I don't usually use it on an iPad or anything like that. I just find using it on a computer with a proper big screen is much better. I can just see better on the screen when you're editing photos. So yeah, I use Lightroom to edit my photos and I have Lightroom presets. I'll leave links to them down in the description below. Will I do YouTube full time? Now that's an interesting question and a question that I've been asked quite a few times. And some people already think I do YouTube full time already, which isn't the case at all. I do YouTube purely for fun, purely because I wanna share, purely because I wanna share my opinions, reviews, I wanna share, things every day like this, you know, do things like this. Um, YouTube doesn't make me anything crazy. It doesn't even make me minimum wage. YouTube pretty much only pays for like my fuel or my car. <laughs> that is literally it. You know, YouTube really doesn't make me much money whatsoever. I do YouTube for fun. Um, I do YouTube because I enjoy it. And I don't think I would ever like to do YouTube full time either. As much fun as it is to make YouTube videos, I don't wanna have like a schedule where I upload a video every week and I have to force myself to make videos. I don't wanna do that. You know, I wanna make videos when I feel creative, when I feel like I wanna make videos and when I have the time. You know, YouTube videos take a lot of time. I think a lot of people underestimate how much time it takes to make a YouTube video. You know, because a lot of people just see the shots, they see the person in front of the camera. They don't see a lot of the behind the scenes, things like story planning, things like coming up with a video idea in the first place as well, coming up with um, shots, coming up with what you're gonna talk about, coming up with how the flow of the video will work, finding music, all these different things. There's so much that goes into a YouTube video. You know, when it comes to my YouTube videos, they usually take a day, two days of work, each of them. So you can imagine, you know, in a week, if, if I want to make a video a week, I've got to spend a day or two days just to make a video every week. And unfortunately, um, you know, YouTube doesn't make me enough money to do that. But I will continue doing YouTube. I love doing it. 
it's good fun and I'm always I think I'm always going to make YouTube videos just for fun what's my daily driver when it comes to phones so I use the iPhone 10s as my main phone I use the Apple Watch series 4 as my main watch that I use every day and I have a 2016 15 inch MacBook Pro with the touch bar um, I think I'm going to get rid of that MacBook Pro soon actually I want to actually upgrade to well I want to switch it up to an iMac. I've been saying I want to switch to an iMac for ages now, but the iMac is just so much more powerful, so much better for work, everyday work. You know, if you if you really don't need a laptop, I would always consider getting an iMac. I would always recommend getting an iMac. You get a lot more value for money when you get an iMac, and they're actually reasonably affordable, especially if you go for a refurbished one from Apple. I think it's definitely worth it. What do I see myself doing in 20 years? Now that is an interesting question. Um, in 20 years, I'll be 46. I'm 26 right now. Um, I'm still quite young, I'd say. Well, I say I'm still quite young. I'm aging closer to 30. Um, but yeah, I honestly don't know what I'll be doing in 20 years. You know, I obviously want to work in tech. I want to work in the web. I'm really interested in those sorts of things. Um, but tech and the web changes so quickly, you know, it's completely different to how it was 20 years ago. Ideally, I'd love to invest in other like startups, other tech businesses, things like that mainly because I, I, I'm really interested in business. I just love business. Um, I've always been interested in business. You know, I feel like I'm an entrepreneur at heart. You know, deep down I know I'm an entrepreneur and um, that's what I like doing. Um, you know, I, I like that sort of lifestyle, you could say. A lot of people think it's a lifestyle of you, you work whenever you want or you take days off whenever you want. Yeah, it can be, but then at the same time, you've really got to love what you do and you've really got to be disciplined as well. You know, when you love what you do, you naturally just do it anyway. Who knows what I'll be doing in 20 years? Who knows where I'll be in 20 years? Um, you know, I haven't thought that far ahead yet. So yeah, we'll see. Will I buy a Tesla? Now, <laughs> I was so, so close, so close to ordering a Model 3. They're coming out in the UK right now. You know, they're literally coming out next month. You can pre-order one now. You can go on the website, order one the way you want it. I was so, so close to buying one. However, the pricing in the UK is, is like 30, 40% more than it is in the US. And that's really what's put me off it. You know, I definitely think electric cars are the future. That's where we're going. And that's where I want cars to go as well. You know, ever since I drove the Model 3 in LA um, in January, of one of my followers on Instagram let me drive his and I just thought damn like this is actually this is amazing this this is what the future is all about so yeah I will get a Tesla at some point I might get one next year instead now so I'll probably get a used one you know a used one I'm hoping will be like five ten grand cheaper with a few miles on it I'm not too fussed about getting a brand new car I don't really see the obsession with getting a brand new car or brand new things all the time all of my cars have always been used. I've never bought a brand new car because you just lose so much money in depreciation. So yeah, I will buy a Tesla at some point, hoping to get a Model 3 next year. If not next year, maybe the year after. You know, I have electric in my garage. I have everything set up pretty much where I can have an electric car and charge from home, no problem. So yeah, I look forward to having a Model 3 on my drive and in my garage. What was my first car? Now, <laughs> so my first ever car, was a 1996 Renault Clio, which I bought for 300 pounds. The insurance on that car was more expensive than the car itself. The insurance on that car was like 1700 pounds. You know, I was like 17 when I bought it, 18 when I bought it. And that was all I could afford. I had no money then, you know, I was, I was a student. I was still at school. I was still at college, um, you know, and yeah, I could barely afford to run that car. That car was absolutely dreadful as well. I remember the sunroof leaked. Like if it was raining and I was driving down the road and I go around a corner, the water would fall out of the sunroof and hit me on the face. That's how bad it was. This car was absolutely awful. The footwell in the car also on rainy days just should have water in it. Don't know why, but yeah, it was an absolutely awful car. I feel like it's good to start small, good to start with something cheap because then I feel like you appreciate it much more once you start being able to afford better cars and better things. So yeah, my first car was a 1996 Renault Clio Panache. The most important part, Panache. I mean, the car is literally the least Panache thing ever. But yeah, that was my first car. I was glad to get rid of it. I had it for like three years, two, two and a half years, three years. And I was glad to, to get rid of it because it was just awful. So yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed this Q&A. Um, as I mentioned, I am going to write a book about everything pretty much. So I can really go into detail. I'll leave a link to that in the description below. If you're interested, pre-order it. If you're not, who cares? You know, I don't expect you to be. Pre-order it, you won't be charged until it's actually released. So even if I don't ever release it, say I don't ever release it, you won't be charged anyway. So don't worry about that. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter and subscribe for more.